While every application and website has some form of navigation, everyone's is a little bit different. So when all these services make the transition to mobile, they need some way to determine if their navigation controls are working well for the small screen. To help with this, let's look at some ways you can evaluate mobile navigation and decide what is and isn't working. To start, let's take a look at two different photo sharing services for the small screen. Here's Flickr from Yahoo and Instagram from Facebook. What do you notice is the primary difference between the opening page of these two services? Well, to start, Flickr really leads off with navigation. Instagram, on the other hand, starts off with content. In fact, a lot of content. You can just jump in here and see photo after photo after photo. This is epitomized by a quote from the co-founder of Instagram, Mike Krieger. He says, mobile experiences fill the gaps while we wait. And no one wants to wait while they're waiting. So Instagram starts off with content and gives people an opportunity to engage instantly. Flickr instead starts off with navigation options. What's wrong with navigation options, you say? Shouldn't we let people decide what they want to do? To illustrate, let's look at LinkedIn's mobile app for a second. Please tell me the difference between buzz, news, and updates. If you can't, then I've made my point. It's difficult for us to know what's behind each link and how the creators of a site or app have decided to organize things. So in LinkedIn's redesign, what they've actually done is put content front and center, as epitomized by the quote from designer Frank Yu. Frank says, we put content up front and remove the friction of a dashboard, allowing people to get immediate value right when they start things off on the small screen. YouTube has been doing this well for quite a while. The opening screen for YouTube provides a minimal set of navigation options and a whole bunch of content right up front. So you can jump into that Justin Bieber video with just one tap. When it does come time to navigate on YouTube, that's only one tap as well. Just hit the navigation control and now you're in navigation mode. But there's one problem with this approach, and that is you're out of context. What we really want is the ability to not lose our place when we decide to explore our navigation options or go elsewhere. ESPN's mobile experience handles this well. They also have minimal navigation and maximum content, but when you tap the menu control, a little overlay shows up that allows you to move between sections, find what you're looking for, and if you decide to close it up, you leave off right where you started and context is maintained. ESPN does one more interesting thing, which is when you get to the end of a content page, they provide some additional navigation options for you. This bottom navigation menu gives you the opportunity to pivot and explore. That is, find out what's hot, what's happening with your favorite teams, or with your fantasy leagues. YouTube, on the other hand, doesn't provide this opportunity. At the end of YouTube's list of videos, we can sign out or send them feedback. In other words, we've hit a dead end. To counter this issue, what we can do is still maintain the minimal top-level navigation controls we saw on ESPN and YouTube, but have those controls actually link to a bottom menu full of opportunities to pivot around the site. To keep people in context, we can provide a back-to-top link that, if we tap, takes them right back to where they left off. The other interesting thing about this bottom menu is that it actually aligns with how people hold and use mobile devices. That is, the comfortable to hit areas in the bottom half of the screen, right where that menu is positioned. In walking through these examples, we've seen a number of different ways to evaluate mobile navigation solutions. Do they start with content and provide minimal access to nav when it's necessary? Do they allow you to maintain context and come back to where you left off without getting lost in a maze of menus? Do they allow you to pivot and explore when you get to the end of content so you can find things you may not have been looking for in the site? And last but not least, do they take into account how people actually hold and use mobile devices in their daily lives? Navigation systems that do all those things tend to work much better and create a more fluid, fast, and easy experience for your users.